بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد الجنة أقرب إلى أحدكم من شرق نعله to achieve Jannat is very easy if a person has focus and he's understood his objective and he knows the direction he's going to and he doesn't fall prey to the doka, deception, trickery and planning of shaitan and iblis, nafs, environment. So if a person does amal but they do the amal properly, there will be value. So a person may concentrate on reading a lot of nawafil, but we haven't got our faraid right. So yes, read nawafil, but try to perfect our salat. Now that first salat reward and all the virtues are multiplied. So people are performing salat, but they're not reading salat. They're not establishing salat. A lot of people are making tilawat, but are, they, are we actually reading Quran? So we're making the khatams, but am I reading Quran with proper tajweed, how it should be read in the kafiyat, iqra'u al-Quran bilhoon al-Arab, how Nabi has taught us to read. We're making dhikr, but we're not remembering Allah. Dhikr in itself is a remembrance, but in the same dhikr we are ghafil of Allah. So, Life and time are valuable commodities, but this limited resource needs to be utilized properly and that's where we need to sit in the company of the ulama and mashayikh and learn deen, take out time. Everybody doesn't have time, but there are many people in the world who have made time. So it's not about having free time, it's about making time and a person will make time for his priorities. Then he can maximize on his akhirah because he has prioritized. A person cannot make a khatam every day, so at least read three quls, make it a habit. In the morning and evening, I'll read it nine times. Three quls, reward of a khatam of a Quran, so in the morning and evening you made six khatams. So what's your normal tilawat? You can't manage 20 paras, 10 paras, even one para. You can manage Make time for one page, then start somewhere. And after that one page, read the quls. And tell Allah that Ya Allah, give me tawfiq one day to make a khatam every day. A person reads Isha and Fajr Salah with Jamaat, get the reward of a bad the entire night. Now a person in these Mubarak Ayyam, in the months of Ramadan, in different mawaki with his opportunities, if he never read Isha and Fajr with a Jama'at, how unfortunate that person is. Then we did uh, the Masnoon morning and evening idea, so many. Just one of them, in morning and evening, a person reads, Raditu billahi rabba wa bil islami dina wa bi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiyya wa rasoola. And what Nabi alayhi salam has said, Fa'ana zaimu, I take full responsibility. I am the guarantor. لَآخُذَنَّ بِيَدِهِ أَتَّا أُدْخِلَهُ الْجَنَّةِ I take guarantee to protect this person. I will grab him by his hand and I'll make sure he goes to Jannah. Another way, كَانَ حَقَّنَ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُرْذِيَهُ Allah takes responsibility to make him happy, to fulfill his needs of dunya and akhirah. How long will it take to read the dua and how unfortunate a person is that he spends his entire life making effort but he never knew this one dua. How much other adiyah, how much other amal are they in deen? Shaitan who is the master conman will try because that's his expertise. And a person won't even know how much deception is in. So we generally base things on the outside, but the inside story is something else. And that's dunya. Externally, it's lush and plush. But what's behind it, that's what deen, iman, akhirat is all about.
the plotting of the people of Batil outwardly, it seems that they are out for good. But internally, what's the plot? A man entered with a boy to a barber shop. They came in together. Then the man received the full treatment, the haircut from the barber. And as the boy sat in the chair, after he was completed, he said, I'm just going to the supermarket to buy some corn flakes. I will be back in a few minutes. So the barber cut the boy's hair and they waited and the man didn't return. So the barber told the youngster, it looks like your dad has forgotten you. It looks like your dad has forgotten you. The young boy says, you wasn't my dad. You got it wrong. That wasn't my dad. I was walking on the road when he approached me. He walked up to me and said, come on, we're going to get a free haircut today. We're going to get a free haircut today. So outwardly the Baba was happy he had customers. But at the end, instead of getting here to pay, he lost out. So shaitan and the plotting of shaitan in the dark of dunya until a person doesn't make a decision. This is what I need to do. This is my objective. And then make all effort in every direction to achieve his target. He will be ploy again to the traps and the plotting of shaitan. A bald man came into the barber shop and sat on the chair. He looked at the hair of the Baba and he said, I'm very impressed at your hair. I went for a hair transplant, but I couldn't stand the pain. It was too excruciating. Let's make a deal. If you can make my hair like your hair without causing me any discomfort, I will give you $5,000. I will give you $5,000. So immediately when the barber heard that, he started shaving his head. He started shaving his head. Where the bald man's thoughts were and how he thought so he'll trick him. And how sharp and how witty was this barber that he shaved his head off. He shaved all his hair off. So like that, this doka in deception. Likewise, Besides the deception of kufr and shirk and idol worship, the fact that we have an opportunity to get pure deen. So, if a person doesn't have iman, he might be worshipping that stone and that cow and that urine more arduous and more punctual than the people of iman. His entire life is wasted. But from among the people of Iman, to get this pure deen in its pristine form is a na'mat on its own. So when we get it, we need to value it. Malatani Rafla is say, when you hear any advice and you don't make amal on it immediately, Allah snatches the hidayat from that advice. So when you hear it again, or when you learn it later on, then the level of hidayat that you could have got, you won't get that much. So that's a deception. That we get in the pure deen, but a person doesn't practice on it. Malay Yasuna used to say, I fear the time when tabligh will be bayanat and bayanat will be tabligh means people will use lectures and the advice of deen for entertainment based on the speaker people will throng based on the speaker will people listen they're not looking at what is being said but they are looking at who is saying it so then in, in his words he say kan ka ayyashe these are people that are just looking for merry-making and enjoyment for their ears. They just want to satisfy themselves and entertain themselves. So eventually, deen itself, that 
medium way we can get hidayat and we can secure our akhirat and we can procure our dunya a person loses out so we need to make shukr to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need to value that and from amongst the bounties of allah and we should not fall in this dhaka is the dunya that allah has given us if Allah has given us dunya, then that is a ni'mad which needs to be utilized for Allah, for akhirat, for deen. Uh, and an average person in today's times would probably have 30, 40, 50 servants. Dedicated servants, 24-7 for their service. Somebody saying, but we don't have any servants, we just have a worker in aid that works 9 to 5. Let's just look at the bathroom. So a person goes to relieve themselves, they go to the shower, a simple thing, open the tap. How many servants, if we had to go a few centuries back, would you need to make sure that on the flick of your finger, you get water coming out? Then how many people would you need for that water to be purified? The system behind the water, where it's coming from, the pumps, the reservoirs, the dams. How many people were needed and required to make sure that system works? Then the purification system. That that water is pure enough for you to utilize. It's not murky, etc. Then the flusher system, when you flush the toilet, how much? work was there behind that then you went into the bathroom the lights how many khadims in those days you needed to get the lights working then we have underfloor heating how much people you needed to make sure that the room that you're in were comfortable then the geezer that you open the tap and the tap is at the temperature that you want it how much servants in the past they would have needed that? Go into the kitchen, go into everything of our life. 40, 50, 100 people are working for us 24 hours of the day, but we've not capitalized on that. In Akthara ma akhafu alaykum ma yakhruju Allah alaykum in barakat al ard, that the most thing that I fear from you is what Allah will grant you from the things of the earth. Sahaba asked, what is that? Call it Zuhra, uh, the, the beautification, Zuhratul Dunya, the beauty and the, the enticement of the dunya. Externally, it's a delusion. Internally, it's something else. Don't engage in the, the dhikr and the mentioning and your time and your energy in the resources of the dunya. Because sometimes a person gets so engaged in dunya, dunya he doesn't even realize how much is part of the plan? He doesn't even realize how much is part of the plan. They say that uh, uh, a man came home from work and he told his wife, it's a Saturday now, so I've got a schedule. I am going for golf with my friends. So she said, no problem. But remember 4 p.m. we've got an appointment. You needed to take me for shopping. So husband said, done deal. I know I'll be finished by that time. And he goes and 5 p.m. the wife is restless 6 p.m. 7 8 then he pitches up so the wife when she sees him starts screaming where have you been honey this is terrible you've disappointed me i had things to do so he says sorry my dear a terrible thing happened my friend on the first hole dropped dead he had a heart attack Oh, shame. The wife said, feeling guilty and symp sympathizing with her husband. That's awful. My apology is for reacting like this. So he says, you telling me, you know how difficult it was to finish the 18 holes when I had to hit the ball, then drag him to the second hole, then hit the ball, drag him, hit the ball, drag him like that. 18 holes. Now you can understand why I was so late. Now you can understand why I was so late. So he was a fanatic of sports. 
and it didn't even affect him that my friend has died. Mara Isa alayhi salam bi kariyatin faida ahluha mawta. Isa alayhi salam was what is awari and he came across a city where people were dead, their bodies were lying there. He said, Ya mashallah al-hawariyin, inna haulai matu an asakhatihi. These people have died through the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walau matu an ghayrin. If they had to pass away for some other reason, let a dafa nood and they would have been buried. So they said, Ya iruh Allah, wadidna anna alimna khabrahum. If only we knew this story. Fasa'ala rabbahu fa'awha Allah ilayhi. So he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, send wahi to Isa alayhi salatu salam. That uh, when the night will come, they will answer your questions. ثُمَّ نَادَى يَا أَهْلَ قَرِيَا فَأَجَابَهُ They said, لَبَّيْكْ He addressed him. They said, يَا يَا He said, مَا حَالُكُمْ وَمَا قِسَتُكُمْ What's your condition, your story? Tell me about it. He said, we were at Afya. We passed a day. At night, we slept comfortably. And when the morning happened, was بَحْنَا فِي الْحَاوِيَا بِدْنَا فِي الْعَافِيَا was بَحْنَا فِي الْحَاوِيَا We found out in the morning, we were in Jahannam. He said, okay, for ذَلِكَ How did it happen? They said, لِحُبِّنَا الدُّنْيَا For our love for dunya, وَطَعَتِنَا أَهْلِ الْمَعَاسِ And for us, following the people of Ma'asiyat and disobedience and the transgressors. وَكَيْفَ كَانَ حُبُّكُمْ لِلدُّنْيَا And how was your love for dunya? That was your first flaw. They said, like how a baby, when a mother comes, إِذَا أَقْبَلَتْ فَرِحَ بِهَا And the child sees the mother, how happy the child gets. وَإِذَا أَدْبَرَتْ بَكَا وَهَزَنَ عَلَيْهَا And when this mother leaves, the child cries and is grieved like that also. Like that also, when dunya came, we were happy, we celebrated, we forgot Allah. When dunya left us, we cried, we forgot Allah even more. We forgot Allah even more. So the ulama say that's a sign of iman and love of dunya. When deen comes, do we get happy or sad? And when deen leaves us, are we happy or sad? When dunya comes, are we happy or sad? And when dunya leaves us, are we happy or sad? A man came home and uh, he seen the grandfather very grieved and sad and sorry. And he normally is playing with the children. He was sulky and not playing with the children. So he asked him, oh dad, what's wrong? I see you normally play with the children today. You don't look in the mood. He said, no, I went to the doctor. He took out from his pocket the medicine prescription and he threw it to him and he said, read the label. That's the reason. So the man read the label. On it was written, take two pills morning and evening after meals. Keep away from the children. Keep away from the children. So the instructions of Allah and His Rasul, if a person doesn't get it right, then he will never get it right. Now's the opportunity let us see how we don't get caught in the strap of dunya. We have been given all these bounties and ni'mats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us see. Then Isa alayhi salam said, Fama balu ashabika, what's the condition of your people, your friends, your family? They're not answering. He said, Bilijami minar in their harness and a Procured by flames of fire. The AD Malaika Vilad Shidat in the hands of ruthless, harsh, stern Farishtas. So he said, Kaifa Ajabtani Anta Bainahum. You're amongst them. How did you answer? He said, Kuntu fi malam akum minhum. I was staying amongst them, but I never perpetrated the guna that they did. Falamma nazala bihim ul adab asobani ma'ahum. But when Azab came, I was counted amongst them. And I am now ala shafiri jahannam on the bridge of jahannam. La adri anju minha am ukakpiu fiha. I am thrown in jahannam. So Isa alayhi salam told his hawariyin, la aklu khubz al-shayr to eat coarse barley with salt and wearing coarse clothing. 
when Nom al Mazabil and sleeping even in a garbage dump, uh, location in a garbage dump, Kathir, this is a lot. This is a lot. Ma'afiya dunya wal akhirat. Allah is giving you afiyah in dunya and akhirat. This is a great bounty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of realizing the haqiqat of the shortness of this life and preparing for akhirat amal for today is to read kul ya il kafirun and then go sleep fa innaha bara'atum min shirk a person will be protected from shirk wa akhidu da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin